um, because then we can then we can tell later, uh, you know, who's who's here. I think I see uh, maybe Philippines. I know somebody somebody is here, maybe from China, which is uh, which is which is lovely, uh, though very very not timely. I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but we were doing our best to to make this a good time for for as many as many continents as possible. Yeah. Indonesia, oh my goodness! Yeah, and, yeah, I know. And and uh, and some of us, some of us who are usually in Chicago are not. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm balancing that out. <laughs> Wonderful. As what? I was just saying, Ellen is representing <clears throat> all people there. Yes, oh, no, oh, oh, Christine also in Chicago. Nice. Is that Ellen? No. Oh, okay. enjoy. Oh, yes. Okay, you. We, we, we need to. We need to meet up at the Newberry at some point. Clearly, uh, you know that's uh, another. Uh, you know, we. we I would have... love to do that sometime. Yeah, I've been there a number of times because I just live on the north side. Yeah. So, but, but, um, but no, you know, you're always, always welcome. I can always pull out some, some of the weirder things. So, um, yeah. Oh, I'd love to see that. And I'm sure Christine would too. She's muted, but she's my friend and we've love to do that. <clears throat> Christine just became a member. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Bonnie. <laughs> we can see you. Brand new member. Okay. So Suzanne, do you want to start and do you want me to introduce you? Uh, if you must. Um yeah, I think I think yeah, 10, 105 my time isn't isn't too bad. Okay. So I will Always. I will spotlight you for everybody and then you can share your screen. So I am very, so my name is Marianne Petit and Suzanne has asked me to co-host, um, longtime member of the Movable Book Society and one of my favorite organizations because aside from everyone being as kind and as wonderful as they are, it's one of the most inter interdisciplinary and interesting groups of people I've encountered. Um, I'm an artist and a professor at NYU, but my role here is to introduce Suzanne who, as our new fearless leader, is a curator, scholar, and collector with lifelong interest in the way books and art have been used, not just looked at. She has curated many exhibitions, nearly all of which have involved books. Her favorite so far is last summer's pop-up books through the ages of the Newberry Library in, in Chicago. She works there as a curator of rare books and manuscripts and loved that- Neither one of those are good. Which one is the better of the two? Oops. Uh, I oh, think thank you for getting up. Can yeah, everybody so mute their microphones? Um, uh, and, um, say mute down here. Okay. Uh, she loved that in this show, she was able to survey the history of pop-ups from the Middle Ages to the present and to create a laser cut pop-up Newberry takeaway kit with the help of Sean Sheehy and Hannah Patzel. So Suzanne, take it away. All right. So I, I, I sort of feel like I've been going on and on about, about, uh, this, my this my one one chance to really tell a good story about pop up books, uh, and uh, and the Newberry made them you know had the good sense to let me let me go with it, but uh, I obviously needed a lot of help. Uh, can you can you see me see me and Jester Garb uh, showing off a very large book the Newberry did not own? Uh, with yes, the dragon see you. with a dragon on it. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah. So basically, uh, I'm going to run through a little bit of. Of of the um the pop up books through the ages. Uh, originally, I did want to call this movable mayhem pop up books through the ages because, as we all know, any any even even modern pop up books uh, unravel in really interesting ways once they're used. So it was not just about you know, surviving examples, how long far back these went. It really was about the relationship between readers and the absolute joy of of the vol vowel from the get-go. And uh, as you can see on the right of this, uh, the webpage, uh, uh, the uh, Movable Book Society uh, sort of anniversary book that started with Robert Sabuda's uh, Matthew Paris image was really very important for, for this exhibition because uh, we couldn't borrow the original I from- we'll Switch to a different- Could we, could we try muting? Yeah, let's see, Ben, you might be able to- 
help out with that. Just leave it as it is, love. We can't. We'll lose it. Okay, uh, David. I think I. Uh, I think that might be. You know what? I'm gonna. Uh, hold on. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, uh, so, so I'm yeah. As as Marianne said, I, I'm more on the the sort of history side. I I have a very very small number of book pop up books that I collect myself. Uh, though I learned a lot about what I had at home through this exhibition. Uh, uh, I've, I've never, uh, before this exhibition, I didn't have the chance to really uh, make anything close to, to serious paper engineering on my own, uh, with one, one tiny exception that I'll, I'll talk about in a little bit. But, uh, it was, but I've always looked at the historical background of this as something that should be more, more discussed. I just, I, it sort of blew my mind that you would have so many surviving examples of of these pieces of paper or in if you go far back enough vellum that have moving components, not just turning pages, but but extra interactive elements. And that's really what I've I've studied, you know, as a as as a as a graduate student in 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 art history, uh, and uh, ever since. I mean, Marianne was talking about how interdisciplinary this group is, and it really really makes you feel welcome when when like me you're even trying to think about whether whether you're part of art history book history and even history of science because there's a lot of learning about about the human body about uh timekeeping and things over the centuries that uh that that is is wound up in the early history of of the pop-up books so i'm just gonna show, do a couple little behind the scene things uh from this one Oh yeah, we had that. We had this great postcard from the Megendorfer uh, that that had, uh, um, you know, you could it it moved as you as you as you turned it. So that was sort of fun. Um, he, I mean, how could we, how could you pass up on an excuse to have have the the Peter Appian dragon, you know, that large? I mean, the let people. I mean, we did we really couldn't find a flat print that was horizontal that you could open as if you were opening the flap so having the dial on the door was was really a good a good substitute I think it really worked out uh, beautifully in that case uh but yeah uh the Pinocchio which I know a lot of you a lot of you know was something that that was so extremely well loved by its owner who was it was actually a uh one of the uh one of the Newberry um uh, VPs at one point, and he and he, he passed away in his 90s, and he still had the book. And we showed the, this particular page because it was amazing, but also because the image of Pinocchio, which was what had been f featured in um, in, his, uh, in sort of his nursery, that was featured in in a Movable Book Society anniversary uh, uh, reproductions book. That one had the head pulled off at some point and replaced, probably by uh, by its original owner. So it's sort of knowing exactly how much people use these. You really you really start to see the stories uh, come alive. Uh, you know, not everything not everything was exactly uh, as one might hope. Uh, the old books in vellum need special care. Uh, this is this is uh, several of the uh, twenty plus copies of, of Peter Appian's smaller book that was a little more useful to um, a student audience, and I'm just showing you uh, all of the different uh, movable parts in it. And if you look down at the bottom left, there's a, a string that has a lead weight on it, and because of of the uh, the the cases we had in the space it was we couldn't actually show that original even though there are only a handful of them in the world but uh we were able to talk about them which was good uh, since we're talking about female engineers today i wanted to point out uh this book which which i bought for the exhibition uh, maria eugenia guzman um paper engineer who i couldn't find a whole lot about but i think uh, our team of, of uh surveys uh, maybe can figure it out at some point um and I was putting this modern version of the miracle of the Virgin of Guadalupe together with a 17th century uh, book on pilgrimage. And you can see the you can see the globe gores behind the column there. Uh, just just thinking about uh, you know how how are you engineering paper in the you know, 15th, 16th, 17th centuries, going from long long slips called uh, globe gores to a full sphere. Is, is really a form of doing just that. So we, we included some of the world's most amazing globe gores, which happened to be in our collection in the show. Um, oh, yeah, and, and some of these were actually from my personal collection. And what I loved was that people would take out 
uh, some of these books, like like Le Petit Prince there, which which had been gone. I think my mom sent it to me from she bought it in France and it had gone through customs and was and clearly clearly the customs agents opened it and opened it so hard it broke the spine in some, a couple of places. Uh, you can't really see it from there, but they were clearly looking at the movable parts in the process. So you know, just the idea of having an exhibition like this without letting people touch anything was just anathema. So I think they, they were they were really well loved during the exhibition, but these were non-accessioned objects. Anyway, just, just quickly, best thing, uh, uh, Hannah and Sean there uh, working through this whole process of making the pop-up Newbery kits, uh, you know, trying to make it, make our library a little more accessible, a little, I don't know, a little more adorable, um, if that's possible. I think libraries are, you know, generally pretty, pretty wonderful places, but doesn't, doesn't help, doesn't hurt with a, an edifice like that. Um, yeah. And uh, I have to say, the, uh, there's, I'll, I'll send the link in the chat later, but uh, very recently we had a, a group of these pop-ups uh, were used as part of the teaching material uh, with a group of uh, incarcerated women in Connecticut. And there were um, Yale grads, I was a Yale grad student who asked me if she could have some of these to share because she was teaching about the history of science in the 16th and 17th century, which was her, also her specialty, but she couldn't give them a project uh, that really mimicked this, this idea of putting flat prints together and so forth. So, so she, we were able to successfully have them do this. And apparently it was very difficult to, without the videos and the explanations, but they, but they, they figured it out. So I'm not, I'm, I'm still not sure if they used real glue. Um, we didn't, it sounds like they, I don't know if they use glue sticks, but I tried to not, not do that. Um, oh yeah. Just, just in terms of how Newberry this thing was, I can see the Newberry doorknob in the middle where the dial turns. So I just having that impl implied motion and that little, little end pops out. So it's not in the final thing. It's actually where, where the Volvel is attached. Oh yeah. I just wanted to yeah, show you this. We were, because we actually put one of the pop-ups in the show, just a little, there we go. A little install video there. Um, there it was in the wall with Hannah's original artwork and the free takeaway uh, kits there. All right. Oh yeah. And the, the fact that the, the, the pop-up was inherently slightly unstable on the side where the building was un unfinished was just one of those amazing historical details that, you know, if, if you can collaborate so closely, I, I really, it really uh, benefits the final product. Oh yeah. And I, and here's when the, the, uh, a number of Movable Book Society board members and, and, and Emily came came to see the show. Uh, they, we, we couldn't put everything in. So, so I just wanted to show a more recent acquisition on the left, which appears to be, be popular. It had spiders all over it. And then the tiny little um, uh, for, uh, Ferris wheel at the bottom here is, is, is what they're looking at on the right in the space. So you know, just, just having this sort of miniature version of the life of, of, you know, the mind of the Newberry is just wonderful. Um, so Emily did get a, to spend some time, I think, pretty successfully at the, at the Newberry on one of our very few um, fellowships for, um, for non-academics, but I'm hoping we'll be expanding that. Uh, so we'll see, see what happens. We, we actually had a, probably about four times as many applicants this year for each of the single spots for these. So um, I guess I guess the word is getting out through Movable Book Society. Thank you, Emily, for featuring that in in a previous um, a, a previous show and tell. Okay, um, I don't know. Are you are, are are we all still interested in knowing how how I got here? I I will I'll just quickly show you the book that uh, Jackie and, and David were talking about earlier. When I did my dissertation uh, at Yale, it was on basically the pop-up book in the Renaissance, and there being religious applications, this this Easter wheel uh, sort of books where where you have um, either sundials or or lunar calculations with ball valves. You can see just how how heavily marked up these were and used. There's some wax under there. Uh, you've got three-dimensional sundials that you have to you fold out of paper and put on, on cardboard. Or in this case, I'm showing you an example of an ivory uh, version that is, uh, that would be the more luxurious version if you couldn't, couldn't afford, if you, if you could afford it. Um, yeah, there you go. There's the paper, paper version put together. This is the, this is 1529, really, really early. Just, there's only one 
one uh, one of these woodcuts left in the world. Um, yeah, we could get anatomy, learn learn about innards. Yeah, Marianne, I know you can you could say a lot about these. That that, that one's my favorite. Is in is in uh, Berlin, I think. Um, oh yeah, and then you can also have your uh, your little uh, titillating uh, pair of underpants uh, in in Italy there. So so you know this is this is just the early earliest versions of 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 some of the very simple structures that have been elaborated since. I, they're may, they're not really pop up books in the way that 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 we necessarily think of, where where you have whole centerfolds escaping the codex entirely, but they are doing a lot of the same visual sort of reorganizations. Yeah, there we go. Oh, right. And then um, I mentioned I mentioned the uh, in my my book has has one little do it yourself bit, so you can make the make the um, the Pope and the Devil, um, uh, yes, uh, be a flat print. So yeah. Anyway, I've definitely I've definitely frightened a lot of librarians. I'm not a librarian. Uh, I don't have the degree uh, with holding scissors near a book, which is my my book and my copy of my book. So just going through and you know sewing the parts together so that so that you can make what is what might be a very dry <laughs> monograph. Uh, you know, if a little with a couple of extra pages, you can still have that off that, that option and then the publisher really didn't want you to cut out the original it does it does say you know xerox or cut so um so yeah anyway uh yeah these are these these are these are everywhere still i'm still finding examples that i didn't know about so um i do have a catalog online of the early ones um so yeah i think that's i think that's about it um i did a small exhibition similar to the one at the newberry uh, but at the Beinecke when I was in grad school, so you can recognize the the, uh, the dragon in the middle. Um, we had anatomy flat prints of a different sort in a show I did at the um, at the Art Institute of Chicago, and um, you know kept finding additional organs while while we set them up because they had sort of slid down the back and they were supposed to be re removable. So there you go. Sorry for that. But um, but yeah, that's probably I think that's that's about that's 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 plenty. I mean you've got. I could I could go on about printed instruments with these th th almost the most three dimensional actually of the things I've studied, but bringing bringing something that needs a compass and uh, shadow catchers, uh, m making that out from a block like this, um, it's really it, it was it was really visionary at the time that you were thinking in this many dimensions. So I do think I do think it belongs in the same category as everything else. So, all right, I'm gonna unshare and I'm sure we have questions, but uh, just, you know, I, I'm not your, I'm not, I'm not part of the, the, the industry of paper engineering, though I, 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 I love learning about it. Uh, and uh, I can, I can't always answer some of the process questions, but I can, I can help uh, route you in the correct ways if you, if you, if you need, if you need that sort of, uh, that sort of direction. So, um, so yeah, let me look at the chat and see if we've got anything. Oh yes, in the Newbury Fellowship. Oh yes, the yeah, the underpants uh, uh, courtesan. Um, it, there's actually quite quite a long history of of different um, different different courtesans. Uh, those are male male underpants. So there's there's also a gender bending thing going on there, which I I don't have time to go into, but. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a lot of different versions. Sometimes you actually get just skeleton legs under there in case you were, in case you don't, you know you're thinking it's going to be too 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 funny or, or, or titillating. There's there, there's a chance you, yes, yeah, so you just get a reminder of of, of your future. Anyway, um, did anybody have any um, immediate questions uh, they wanted to just jump in? Um, I think the next up we want to we want to get move on to. Um, Oh, oh, the shoes. The shoes uh, labeled uh, her as a courtesan. Um, yeah, Ellen, Ellen, I don't, I don't, the shoes, the Chopin shoes and are really, they're not specifically for courtesans. I mean, they, they certainly gave her a, a, a dramatic amount of height. So again, it adds to this concept of not knowing what you're getting under the skirts, but, um, but definitely, definitely the liftable skirt part is, uh, is, 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 gives the game away there. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, I, I, I definitely 
spent too much time in in the pre pre eighteen hundred uh you know pop up book genres, but working at the Newbury on on the show all the way up to the present, you know, has really has really been been an education for me as well. So, yep, always happy to look at them. You know, look at where the structures are are going forward rather than you know backward. So, let me look at this. Thank you. There's so many things that I had not seen previously in your presentation. Thank you so much. Hello. Yes, and oh, oh, and one thing, um, Emily's uh amazing uh book that she uh. Uh, yes, yeah, is linked. Uh, Isabel's put yeah. in the chat. Uh, that that is uh, uh, was a direct response uh, okay. to the twenty plus uh, Peter Appian books with the um, with with these navigational uh, volvels that uh, we that have. Was very nice. We ate another gl Glauberstein, so we ate at their children's house. Okay, so um, to look look for that. That's uh, it, that was a you know, a wonderful modernization and sort of rethinking of what you can do with those sorts of tools. I see some snickering over there. I'm like, let's go. Uh, what are you two up to? No. Okay. All right. So, um, so Marianne, what should we, should we move on to, uh, to our, our esteemed, uh, uh, surveyists? Absolutely. Let me spotlight them now. Um, really quick. It looks like Andrew Garrison has a question. Oh, okay. Sure. Um, Yes, uh, I, I I spoke to you at the uh, at the Newberry show briefly mm. uh, uh, about uh, paper theater, mm. um, and I I still have some questions about that just because I've always been interested in the Victorian paper theater that uh, uh, you see at the Pollock Troy Museum in London and other places are, are good conservators of that, but they're not exactly pop ups. I mean they they're they're rigid. Uh, sometimes the size of a, of a small television back in the day. Yeah, more like a, uh, like but a peak I wonder show. if you have come across mm -hmm. uh, any examples of pop-up theater where the theaters themselves were, uh, were flat or opened up in, out of a book and were operable toy theaters. Hmm. Um, I, I think the, the sort of peep show format uh, is sort of the standard. Yes. It's probably what you're, what you're talking about where there's sometimes a small um, sort of oculus and then, and then it may it may open up, or more like a tunnel book. Uh, it may it may lift towards you. Uh, I don't I don't think that's really doing what you're what you're asking about. Um, there's I there, I'm sure uh, Rebecca found something uh, relevant. Um, do you Rebecca? Do you want to jump jump in? Alice is. Uh, it's a contemporary one, but it's the it's the structure that Andrew's asking about. Please. I don't oh, know that goodness. it's I don't know that it's rare or special, but it's oh my perfect. You're asking oh. the right place. <laughs> oh yes, thank you. Uh, does that function as a theater with um, uh, movable actors that can be brought in from the sides? That's the way the Pollock toy theaters were. Oh, I see. It opens up well, into it. All right. It's a pop. Can... Yeah, it's it is a pop up, and then it has like some little stabilizers that you can take out to set it up a little more rigidly yes to that's then important. play with it you know and then it has little people and in the back what's interesting is the the set is turns like pages of a book too hmm. i don't know and it has some sort of three-dimensional elements too so the backgrounds are have this page structure it's very awkward to operate and show <laughs> On this little oh camera. yes, I do see what but, you, you know, mean. That that means the the scenes can be operated by turning the pages, and then you I could have just, actors I, that move from the side. Yeah, I will type um, the citation information into the chat. Oh, thank you very much, Rebecca. Yeah, no, my 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 sense is that they're they're not, probably not too early for for uh, for formats like that, but um, that, that's perfect. And uh, Ellen Ellen Rubin did did put in the chat that. Um, that there were their Bon Marche postcards that uh, are, th are cards that have pop up theaters with fairy tales that are like that, and Katie Smith said there's a um, old Punch and Judy pop up uh, that in the University of Florida there, so um, so yeah, there's it seems like yeah the, if you're looking at sort of pantomime yeah 
pantomime mm -hmm. traditions, that's probably, yeah, that makes sense. That's where you would find it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see, see them going, going back probably pre, pre 18th century though. Yeah. Then. Okay. Cardolino.com. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right. And so, so we didn't, we didn't quite uh, make this in, uh, in in March uh, for for Women's History Month, but one of the reasons I wanted uh, Rebecca and uh, uh, Jackie to to talk was 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 because of that that connection. And um, let me let me pull up. Uh, let's see. So, I'm just going to do a quick quick bio for the two of them. Um, Rebecca Rebecca Rouse is associate professor in media arts, aesthetics, and narration in the division of game development at the University of uh, Skopje. I sorry, Sweden. Rouse's research spans artistic creation, design with XR technologies, media history, and critical pe uh, pedagogy. Uh, pedagogy. Goodness. Her focus is the development of new forms of storytelling with new technologies in media, theater, games, and interactive narrative. Uh, she teaches courses in uh, game writing, interactive storytelling, world building, XR media, theater design, and game user experience at uh, at all levels. And then uh, uh, Jackie or uh, Jacqueline Reed Walsh is professor of education and liberal arts at the, the Pennsylvania State University. Uh, cross appointed between the departments of curriculum and instruction in women's gender and sexuality studies, she teaches courses on children's books and girl cultures. She's a specialist in children's and girl literature, culture and media past and present. She has published in a range of topics from 17th century turn up books to contemporary children's popular culture. Her latest book is Interactive Books, Playful Media Before Pop-Ups, Rutledge 2018. Also, she has a digital archive and a blog project housed with uh, Penn State University Libraries, which I'll put in the chat if, they if she hasn't already. Uh, and she's currently in, in Turin uh, working with the uh, uh, Sort of animated books project there. So uh, take it away. Let, let us know what about your preliminary uh, findings on this important topic. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. And um, thank you also for supporting our work with um, helping us to um, revise and develop our survey and deploy it uh, with the community. So uh, Jackie, do you want to maybe introduce the talk or? Oh, yes. OK, so this talk is, is preliminary um, and Rebecca will read over the survey questions. A number of you um, answered and some but some of you may not seen the survey. So in a minute, we'll um, show the survey. But what I was just going to do um, was to briefly discuss the connection between our project, um, a project we're involved with about terms, and give a short story of me meeting my first Harlequinade. Um, <laughs> um, so we want to thank um, Suzanne very much for allowing us to do this. Um, what we were interested in was the idea of the term paper engineer um, and what it means, and is there a gendered a component to it. So we were interested in finding out if there were women, are there were women paper engineers, whether you're building of two dimensional, three dimensional structures. And we also um, related that to questions about definition, the definitions of makers of movable books uh, to terminology about movable books. And so we're, we're both involved with this uh, terms um, project. But even though you all probably know this, I want to uh, share briefly my first encounter with a Harlequinade book at Oxford when I realized there was much more than typical movable books. Okay, I'll just be a minute. Um, so at the time, Mr. Clyde Hurst was the curator and he knew I was interested in historical children's books. But instead of giving me a conventional volume, he set me a challenge and placed a small, narrow 18th century volume in blue paper on the table. And inside the covers lay what appeared to be one strip of paper, it wasn't actually two, folded in accordion fashion and composed of flaps that could be lifted up or down. The directions were printed on the flaps and the, there were colored illustrations and doggerel verse and led me to the world of English uh, pantomime. 
And as Mr. Hurst left the room, well, he didn't leave the room. He wouldn't leave me alone. But when he left the table, he said to me, are these books or toys? And I'm still trying to answer this question, um, as the Temporalies know, um, when I was last um, on my sabbatical. So um, my idea is that movable books can be understood as interactive objects because they're like a puzzle or game with more than one solution. Um, they demand active engagement from their reader, viewer, player, so they become interactors. Um, so I think looking at what a movable book is, which is not a simple definition, we're applying these ideas to the makers of movable books. So our question was um, about female paper engineers. Um, are there women paper engineers? And um, we observe that they're often invisible in several ways, not present on the cover, not present in the library catalog. And for fun, I looked up paper engineer on Google and you get many good references to engineering, chemistry, physics, biochemistry. And then I put in women in paper engineering and they said it was a good career uh, for women. But the term being used to describe people who design and make movable books is much less frequent. So I, wonder, I was wondering, when did the term become acceptable? When did it become commonplace? Um, is it connected with the pop-up book? Um, did it start with Disney? Um, and is there a gender implied um, by the term um, paper engineer. So this okay. is- So then yeah, I'll share a little about the survey because we, you know, we knew, of course there are women paper engineers. We wanna know who are they and how can we kind of lift um, that, um, lift that tradition and history. So uh, we designed this very short survey with Suzanne's help and we, this is, this is what we sent out basically. So if you didn't have a chance to see it, this is just a quick recap so you can see it just had a little bio about us. And it just said that in terms of, um, there's some introductory text, which is on this yellow square here, explaining the scope of this project. So we, we explained that we're aware of the very strong tradition of women in artist books and book art, but that that was beyond the scope of this particular project. And we're trying to focus here on commercially produced, mass produced movable books, and particularly interested in uncovering the invisible women la labor of women in this context, which as Jackie was just discussing. And that we're also really interested in examples from around the world in languages other than our first language of English um, and outside the North American context. And so we had just four questions in the survey, which was, do you know of any women paper engineers, past or contemporary? Can you direct us to examples of their work? And is there a female Megendorfer, meaning a woman paper engineer who you consider particularly prolific, innovative, and commercially successful on a mass scale? And then we asked to if people were willing for us to follow up with them later, if they would share their, their email with us. And so we had an incredible response. We had 25 respondents, some of whom are women paper engineers themselves, uh, sharing about their own work and process um, and other women who have inspired them. And they uh, look to as fellow engineers um, and anyway, in total, we had over 148 names of women paper engineers shared with us from all over the world. And so this is data that we just you know, recently got at the end of the year, we're just digging into now. So we don't have a lot more specifics to share with you right now, but this is something we're excited that we're working on now. But we, do, we did pull out a few highlights, uh, which Jackie will share. Yeah. So, what we did was we just pulled out a few uh, quotes and this page um, is, and, and they're mainly autobiographical or personal, which is absolutely marvelous. Um, so here's one respondent who said she has a whole shelf of paper engineering books from Karina Fletcher and she's one of her favorites, but she's often uncredited on the cover. So this is like a personal story about someone they know who is a paper engineer. Um, the next two are an example, and there were many of these, of um, artists and, and pop-up book creators themselves uh, sharing stories about their background and their learning and would they consider themselves um, a paper engineer? So that, we thought there's a whole group of that and we really value um, 
value of those is really very interesting. And then um, some people, some respondents um, were reflecting on the whole um, idea of male gendered engineer and what is this and male female and so on. Um, and the, the respondent at the, at the bottom says that they doesn't think there's an accurate comparison as the female male relationship to books is different. I feel many people who are pop-up book artists are working outside publishing lines. So this was just a few quotes of pages and pages and pages. <laughs> um, and we were just, I was, we were just struck by how um, you could pull out these individual quotes. So what I started doing was reading the back issues of Movable Stationery, looking for um, women paper engineers. And there's an interesting article written by um, Kyle, and I can't read my writing here, um, an interview with Patricia Fry by Kyle Ullman from 2008. And Patricia Fry said that she thinks women and men are equally capable of people engineering if one has the inclination and dedication to do it. Unfortunately, this field is like an iceberg. You can only see a few above the surface. So it's hard to know how many paper engineers there are out there. And um, Kyle, um, at the beginning of the article says that since 2008, a real, there's a change in the shift and there's more uh, women who are working as paper engineers. Now I haven't read all the back issues of Movable Stationery. I'm a new member um, and I'm looking forward um, um, to doing that. So I think that's... Uh... And then of course the, the Movable Book Society, as you all know, has awarded recognition to various women paper engineers through the Megendorfer Prize series. And so we looked at that too. Um, the Megendorfer Prize for Best Paper Engineering for Trade Publication, now that uh, category is the one that is most relevant to, to our work here, has been awarded to Marion Bate, the first and only woman yet to win and the first European to win. And then um, it's, it's really important to note though that the prize for artist books, although we're not looking at artist books in our project, that has gone to uh, two women, uh, Colette Fu and Dorothy A. Ewell, and it's also important to note the Emerging Paper Engineer Prize, uh, mm -hmm. which again is a little outside the scope of our project because these are works that aren't published uh, in terms of being mass produced, right? But that has gone to three women, April Kapalugan, Vanessa Youssef, and Kimberly Maher. So it's very exciting to see then a uh, kind of coming um, generation of women paper engineers who are being awarded the, the Emerging Paper Engineering Prize to be looking to and, and um, seeing how their work continues and that they may, they may choose to take their work in a commercial direction or may have done. Um, it's an interesting connection there too to that quote that Jackie was sharing from the interview with Patricia Fry, uh, where she goes on an interview to say that there's kind of a, a coming uh, generation of um, more women paper engineers. So there's a sense of this um, momentum perhaps uh, over the last uh, 10 or uh, 15 years about a momentum with women in paper engineering. And we can note that the Lifetime Achievement Award hasn't uh, gone to a woman yet, yet. Um, okay, so we have this massive amount of data. Uh, so what are we gonna do <laughs> as researchers? And again, we're really grateful to have the chance to share our work in progress with you in this show and tell and kind of take you behind the curtain of our academic process. One thing we th we are interested to do is to take some um, cross historical pairs and pair some examples based on formal characteristics and and take a look at them. Um, and we wanted to begin by looking outside North America. And one pairing we are interested in uh, is to look at the the Postman books from Janet and Alan Alberg, a husband and wife team. Uh, those books are from the '90s, and they're movables, but maybe not pop ups exactly. They um, have a lot of enclosures and they have all different kinds of uh, forms in them that they connect uh, dramaturgically to the narrative in interesting ways that you want to look at. And that connects then with the, the form of the, the works by Tom Seidman Freud, who Jackie would like to share a little about. I'm an historian, so I always go backwards and think. So I was struck by, and these, these, the, these books actually by Seidman Freud are actually here in turn and also um, at Penn State. Um, and what was interesting to me was um, Sedman Freud who lived between 1892 and died in 1930. And she really did very creative so-called 
um, educational books, writing books, um, but the two interactive books that really intrigued me were um, The Magic Boat and also um, The Magic House. I mean, it's my Des Wonder House. I'm sorry, my German's impossible. The Wonderful, the wonderful House, 1929, and Des Zaberboot, 1929, The Magic Boat, translated 1935 and republished 1981. And what intrigued me was the complicated, uh, the first book is got flaps and um, cut out to paper devices and opaque overlays. But the second one has a pull tab that changes all the windows in the house uh, throughout the day, um, the veils. And my favorite right now are these magic pictures, which she was playing with uh, blue and red inks. And then she had a little piece of red transparent um, paper at the back of the book that you she invited the child to lay the the um, paper over the transparency over and make the child disappear or float. And I was really very interested with her play um, in this direction um, before in the late in the late twenties. And if I'm just going to quote quickly from a Maria Pavova who talked about um, how her inter her ingenious interactive storytelling and paper engineering predated Jonathan Safran's Tree of Codes by more than eight decades and Bruno Minari's Masterworks by three. And it, I'm so this is where we are. We're working on our, and we did a paper at Christmas about a paired woman um, workers of with rag books and tactile books. So we're trying to continue that sort of line of work we're doing, as well as this is brand new, a survey. <laughs> And yeah. and so we have a lot of work to do, basically, <laughs> <laughs> because we, we we had a lot of cleaning and organizing to do. But um, uh, as academics, it's actually pretty exciting. So we, we do have to go through the data very carefully now and, you know, remove things that are outside our scope or look at things that are duplicates. But we also we have to make a taxonomy to organize the data. And that might sound deadly dull, but it's actually really creative and exciting for us, because then we also have to define the terms that. Uh, make up the taxonomy, and that is related to this index project at the Pop Up um, Research Center. So we, you know, we want to be in conversation with that. And as we get further along, we plan to get back in touch with the respondents who shared their contact information with us and ask for their feedback on how we're doing. And we'd we'd also really like to gain access to the women and others who do the work of assembly for commercially mass produced movable books. Um, that that we can produce in the world today. We're extremely curious about that contribution as well. Um, and we're really grateful to be in conversation with all of you. And we would love your ideas about anything related to the project, but also specifically about terms and how you think about these terms of movable book, paper engineer, commercial production. Um, and we would uh, love to hear from you. We've got our email addresses here um, on the slide. We hope we'll have some time now to talk to. So. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great comments in the chat. <laughs> Just looking. Yeah, thank, thank you, Re Re Rebecca and Jackie. Uh, yeah, let's let's go to the chat and see um, see where. Okay, see. Well, we'll we can send we can send you all these questions after the fact. Uh, but um, that'd be great. Yeah, so you don't have to jot it all down now. Um, Let's say Kyra talking about Ed Hutch Hutchins introducing her to uh, Karina Fletcher. Uh, so so are you? So Emily Emily is saying I didn't fill out the survey. I th think I thought they were looking only for paper engineers in the trade. So so you so are you looking for 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 people working on artist books as well or not? So it's still not not at this point. I mean, no. we're we're of course curious about that too, but we we had to scope this somehow. Um, and this is where we thought we would start. Um, there is already, you know, more research on uh, artist books like Joanna Drucker and others have uh, published on artist books and women's artist books, but we don't see much academic work on um, women paper engineers who are um, commercial mass producers. And so that was where we thought we would start with our contribution. Yeah, uh, Ellen Rubin says, uh, as mentioning the index uh, for movable stationery, were you able to get a copy of that? Uh, I, 
Oh, not yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we had chatted about it, but I wasn't sure where you were. Well, we'll have to make sure you get one. Um, Thank you. you. Can, I mean, you know, I mean, honestly, that I mean, they should have, they should buy one and from from Amazon in Turin. I mean, that that seems like something they should have in their library. <laughs> so I'll I'll send you the link for that. Um, okay. Yeah, I think it wasn't wasn't our wasn't our, our artist book winner this this year also. I mean, Hiromi I did, is also also female. Um, anyway, so not so that's recent, but again, not not the trade items. Um, so there, yeah, there are a number of of good well, references for online yeah. courses. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, I think and yes, you, people can still fill out the survey, correct? Um, I mean, it's still, I it's still live or would you, would you rather just have, direct, we, we would rather just have you in touch with us at this point. Just send us okay. an email. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is a good question from Kyra. Uh, does the scope of your research only focus on books or will it include paper engineers at greeting card companies? Callmark American greetings. Yeah. Really good question. I think we're just starting with books, but <laughs> I mean, I'm really curious about that too. And I mean, it's also, it's hard to draw those lines they are artificial, right? But um, for now, especially given the massive amount of data that we have, I think uh, we'll have to save greeting cards for further research. Oh, and, and Kyra is pointing out that Home Hallmark also published pop-up books. So there's a lot of crossover Yeah, huge there. crossover. I think I have some of those from my childhood <laughs> too. <laughs> Fabulous, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Art, Art Sato asks, when, where is the next conclave? <laughs> um, I'm not sure what, Maybe that means the next uh, movable book show and tell. Oh, is that? Do you mean the conference? Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll be we'll, we'll be having we'll be having our our scheduled next conference in uh, in in late late September twenty twenty five. Uh, we have a pretty good idea of where, but I think we'll be announcing that at a later date. Um, Art, is that is that what you you wanted to ask? Okay, I wasn't I wasn't sure if that because you because the two of you had given the talk recently, uh, I wasn't sure if it was referring to whether you were going to give another joint talk. Um, okay. Um, sorry. Oh, oh okay. Can I copy of the uh, chat. Do we get a copy of the chat? Yeah, I can. I can send. I can send you a copy oh, of the good, chat. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, green so, so uh, Christine Doherty is saying at Green Tiger Press in the seventies, yeah. paper tipping was delicate work done by Thai women artists. So that's yeah. There we go. I was. Yeah, and uh, Isabel, I did just try to mention the yeah, yeah the most really recent different. artist book award. Yeah, did anybody have a question they wanted to ask live? Oh dear. <laughs> oh, David, David, are you are you uh, David? You're muted. Oh, let me see if I can unmute you. Uh, uh, oh, he's showing us wrote is it wrote caption? Yes, little Red Riding Hood. Okay. It's little Lynn, Hilda Langen. I think that's what David wants to tell you. Okay. Where okay. is David? Okay. Oh, there, there. we go. Okay. Spotlight. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. We we were curious if anyone here knows, you know, about um, or has links to where these books are commercially produced today. Uh, or any any advice for us about how we could pursue that um, angle on our inquiry into women and in, in commercially produced paper engineering? Pe the people who are assembling the books, I mean. Mm. Uh, David, you're muted. We can't, we can't hear you. Uh, Sean and I have a suggestion <laughs> that <laughs> get in touch with Ross and Meyer at Proposition Press, because he publishes pop-up pop books in Asia, and he could probably tell you where he's currently, uh, you, the production facilities he's using now. Uh, you, it used to be South America, and then it moved to China, and now it's kind of moved, you know, a bit more into Vietnam, and, and I'm not exactly sure where the, the main center is at this point, but Rostin Meyer and I'll, I'll put it in the chat, but Proposition, Thank you. Thank he's you. In, in near Boulder, Colorado. And he's a member, he's a board member, I believe, of the Movable Book Society. Yes. Thank you so much. Hmm. 
All right, thank you. Thank you both for that presentation. Uh, and now for something uh, uh, some, something completely different, maybe we should move to our, our last presenter, Emiko. Uh, uh, so how many, how many of you have been on the Discord? How many of you know that there is a Discord? <laughs> now we will, that are all, all good. All good questions. Um, we're not getting a lot of response there. Uh, yes, Emma Emiko has, has been an amazing help at the last the last <laughs> conference. Uh, it seems like you you specialize in every single media in the world, from you know, ceramics <laughs> to paper engineering, and are are wonderful are wonderful at it. Uh, you you're contributing amazing things to the Children's History Museum. Um, I don't know. Just, uh, it's every a, project you do, it seems like like you really, really get to the heart of it, and it's exciting. So um, we, we would love to hear what you have to say about how we can, uh, you know, check in with each other, um, you know, e you even even more online on on Discord. I know not everyone here has necessarily used it, so we'd love we'd love your thoughts. Yeah. Hi. Um. So I uh, wanted to make a space that people could talk about or share things that they found um because like i love the zoom meetings but you don't really get a chance to talk directly to people um at length so uh, i set up a discord group um i'm gonna put that in the chat um so it uh there's also a youtube video that i linked that uh will explain like step for step how to um join and like make an account on discord uh for those who aren't familiar with it um it's an app but you can also do it through your browser so you don't have to have it on your phone if you don't want to have another app on your phone but um it's basically just a forum where you can share pictures you can make comments um and like the chat on zoom is like full of so many cool links and uh i thought that it would be nice to like consolidate some of those resources on discord um so uh i don't know it, i basically am just letting you know that there's here's a link you can go to it um if you want me to walk you through how to join um i i can help people with that but i i just thought it would be fun i don't know how many people um are interested in that but there are some people there already and we've had a small amount of conversations but it was like i just started it right before the conference and then didn't really get a chance to uh invite a lot of people in at the time so um could you could you show us in a, in a browser uh oh yeah can i share that? my screen yeah uh can you should be able to um yeah it, it should be it should be available okay uh, sort of, uh walk walk us into the general um yeah like so um here's ah here's people already joining um so this is uh people um here so there's the general chat which is just for any uh conversations introductions um announcements which i dropped the ball i was going to uh remind people that this was happening and i forgot um Here's, uh, we took a couple pictures um, down at the lake at the conference. So somebody was asking for those pictures. So um, hmm. we're able to share those here. Um, events will be, uh, this was talking about um, a couple that have happened. Uh, so under like paper engineering, this is for if you make something and you want to share it and you're like, excited but you haven't had a chance to get it published yet or mass produced or if you're not planning on that like if you're just making here's a card i made for my mom you can share it here um engineering questions uh i think there was a discussion about like tape um so if you've got <laughs> something that you're knocking your head against uh that would be what this is for um resources is uh what I would love to like start pulling from the zoom chats and like sharing resources uh, here. Um, so collecting, uh, I think we've primarily just got paper engineers in the group at the moment, but uh, everyone has like such cool books. So 
if you want to show like what you have, um, this is really a place to chat about things. Or if you're searching for something and you haven't been able to find it, um, and you want to be like, hey, I, I have this book and my page three is messed up. Let me like, does anyone have it? Can I see what it looks like? Like that would be a good place for that. Um, and then shopping, like if you have something that is coming out, please like announce it, share it, promote yourself. Like, I don't want this to be, you know, somewhere where you're feeling uh, like reticent to put yourself out there. I would love to have people say like, hey, my Kickstarter is going, please back it. Cause sometimes there's a Kickstarter announcement and I don't see it until like, it's already over. And it's like, oh, I missed that book. So um, that's this. So, ah, got more people joining. Um, any other questions? Or, um, how do I stop share? I don't know how to stop share. Um, one second, I'm in. Just shut it down. Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been on Zoom. That's okay. Uh, so to answer Christine, um, the app is called Discord, like Discourse, but Discord, I don't know. They, uh, It's primarily used by like it was started for gamers um so that people could be uh chatting while on world of warcraft or something and now it's used by a lot of different groups so no it was definitely it was i mean you sort of premiered it during the last conference and it seemed like it was it was good for following up with people uh from that as well so um, lots of ways it can ah thank you pierre <laughs> uh for joining uh yeah, it seems it seems like the more people we have on it, the more discussions we can have. I I I've I've actually learned about there was I think a was it a Picasso Paul uh, Oh yeah, I've never I, heard of. I was uh, amazed to see that on there. I need and we don't have it at the Newberry, so I actually have to go find a copy and go look at it in person. So it's uh, on view at the Legion of Honor in San Francisco at the moment. They've got mm -hmm. just like this really small room that has like paper and book uh, arts that like rotates through and. Right now, I like walked in there and it was a, I forget the name of the Dadaist artist, but it's, uh, if you're on the Discord, you can see in the picture. Um, yeah, it was really cool. I was like, oh, that's, because I like poetry as well and didn't know that like they had made a structural uh, Dadaist poem, which was really fun. So Yeah, so there was learning and nerding out to be had on Discord. <laughs> So check it out. <laughs> yeah, thanks, 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 Emiko. That's that was uh, that was a great a great introduction. Okay, so uh, speaking of the use uh, the conference, uh, thanks to Marianne's generosity, uh, we finally have some slightly better some better edited files of of the presentations uh, from uh, from that. I know uh, probably a number of you uh, were at the conference. I'm going to put uh, a link in the chat to sort of current uh living space for for those files if you want to go look at them i will we will be probably be putting it up on um, a private youtube later so that'll be um rather than vimeo that'll that'll be where where that lives and it'll be going out to everyone who either in an email um the link either either in um who either attended in person or virtually so so we'll try try to get get that out uh soon uh and there's just sort of a question for future future to think about whether we want this to be, um, won't want those to be public, but we'll have to have more conversations about, you know, with presenters about that before we do that. So, um, oh, and- uh, and, and May and, I say one thing about the videos? Please, um, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's based yes. It's based on what we got from the AV team. It's it, it, like, in no <laughs> way does it reflect Marianne's skills. It's, yeah, there was some, there, there was, there, there was some Zoom, 
you know, window jumping around that is not always focusing on the right, the right thing at the right time, unfortunately, but it is, it is what it is. And uh, it is documented happily. So, um, so yeah. And I think we had Marion and I have one, one question about future, uh, future events. I think we're going to hold this one to just about an hour. Uh, but uh, if you, does anyone, um, you can put it in the chat. Uh, is anyone uh, interested in doing more make sort of make and take uh episodes at the end of these meetings. We haven't done them in a little while and we just wanted to gauge uh, gauge interest. And if anyone wants to offer to present one, uh, that would make it a lot more likely to, to happen. So um, uh, there's, and I think they are on the, the old ones are, are on the website sort of in a separate, in, a, in separate videos. Um, so you can go back and look at those. You can always email us later. Um, you know, yeah, I'm I'm in info at um, movablebooksociety.org. I have it in the chat. Um, if you if you think that's something you might want to do, but uh, I'm also interested in whether whether people think that that's a valuable uh, addition to have every time or uh, for the quarterly meetings, or if we want to just do it occasionally. So, no well, thanks, thanks, Iva. I'm glad I'm glad you like them. Okay, uh, Vicky likes them. Okay. All right. All right. Well, um, so that's, I think that's everything we, we wanted to, uh, to present, uh, uh, present today. Unfortunately, Olha Lipska couldn't, couldn't make it today, uh, and maybe at a future, uh, future event. Uh, but, Apparently we had we had plenty to plenty to discuss. Uh, if anybody if anybody wanted to quickly uh, broach a separate topic, we'd be happy to have a little more time. But or we could uh, go on and enjoy the rest of our Saturdays. Thank you, Suzanne, right. and Jacqueline, and Rebecca, <laughs> and Erica. <laughs> I had a quick question for uh, Rebecca and Jacqueline. Uh, do you guys have emails that we can place on the chat so that people can contact you if they have additional information that they want to share with you? Since you said it's better to connect with you directly. Yeah, I think I put I think I put it in um, a little ways back, but I can put it in again. There's um, one one email. Is there a second one? Yeah, I think it was in the. I think I think it was in the second. It got separated. I think it's in the separate. Um, like I'll just do it again. Perfect. Oh, my, um, that's my website. No, it's the, the J, the JXR. Yeah. Yeah. JXR 67. Yeah. Hold on. Yes, I was yes. trying, I was trying to do both at once and it was confusing. So, mm -hmm. um, so let me just add that now. Oh, there it um, is. Yeah. Yeah. Just put it in the same place. We really appreciate your attention and suggestions and there we it's go. fascinating. It's a brand new project for us. Mm -hmm. so. No, I'm, I'm so glad you were able to get get so much feedback and um, that you can you start working on on um, honing it to um, to get the taxonomies in place and everything. So that's great. Yeah. And, thank uh, you. Thank you. Thank you, Sean and uh, Emily for for attending. Also, uh, <laughs> this is you did so much to to be running this for so long. Uh, and I think it is such a you know I think it's I think it's a valuable such a valuable thing to be able to get people together in between the conferences. So uh, yeah, thank thank you again for for doing all of those. All right, I guess. Uh, thank you to yes, well, uh, yeah. Nico as thank well. You. She just, thank you. Thank well, you. Oh, she yeah. just bought the, the Discord links again. If anybody wants to go check them out, and the how to video in there. Perfect. Yeah. So again, another yet another way that we can we can keep in touch and uh, you know share share discoveries and. Uh, opportunities yeah buy, buy each other's books yeah it's good okay all right i well, think i think that's it have a great day everyone bye everyone